I've tested two Aura Ring 3s over the last months and based on my testing I think that the Aura Ring can be a great tool for people looking to track and improve their health. However, it has some limitations you need to be aware of. In this video I'll test the accuracy of the Aura Ring 3 when it comes to heart rate, heart rate variability and sleep tracking. Additionally, we'll discuss how I think you could use the Aura Ring to track your health. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, if we go back in time a few months, the release of the Aura Ring 3 was definitely not a flawless one. The main two issues, in my opinion, were that many people really disliked the new subscription model, and the second is the fact that many of the things that were supposed to be improved on the Aura Ring 3 compared to the Aura Ring 2 were not yet implemented. This basically meant that the Aura Ring 3 was just an Aura Ring 2 with daytime heart rate tracking, but now you have to pay a monthly fee of $6. Now, of course, I'm oversimplifying things a bit, but still, to date, many of the features Aura promised are not yet implemented. However, as Aura members will know, last week Aura did provide a timeline for when some of these features will be released, with workout heart rate tracking for running, cycling, and walking set to be released in June of this year. All of this being said, I think even the current firmware of the Aura Ring 3 can be used to keep track of your health. So let's take a look at its current performance and we'll start by taking a look at the heart rate and heart rate variability tracking. One of the most important moments to track your heart rate and heart rate variability are the measurements taken during sleep. Let's start by testing the heart rate measurements during sleep. I tested this by sleeping with an ECG chest strap called the Polar H10 that can generally measure my heart rate very accurately. Here you can see my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap in blue and my heart rate according to the Aura Ring 3 in red. Along the horizontal axis is the time after starting to sleep and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. As you can see, there's a pretty good agreement between both devices, though there is a bit of missing data for the Aura Ring 3, as you can see in red right here. And I actually wore a second Aura Ring 3 on my other hand. Those results are displayed here, and as you can see, the agreement is again very good. You might also notice that the ECG chest strap reference changed a bit. This is because for the chest strap, I also calculate an average heart rate in exactly the same way Aura does it, and there's a slight difference in the time frames between the two Aura rings. If we look at the agreement over a total of eight nights together, we get this overview. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Aura Ring 3. If the measurements perfectly agree, they would be on this blue line right here. The red dots are the moments where the Aura Ring 3 could not get a measurement. As you can see, if the Aura Ring 3 could get a measurement, this matches very well with the chest strap as most points are along the blue line. Now, heart rate variability, which is displayed here, was a bit more difficult for the Aura Ring to measure. Now, before diving into those results, what is heart rate variability, or HRV? We all know what heart rate is. It's the number of heartbeats per minute. Say your heart beats 60 times in the last minute while you were watching this video. This does not mean your heart beat perfectly once every second. It just means that on average there were 60 beats per minute, but the time between heartbeats varies. It might be 1.2 seconds between this beat and the next, and 0.8 seconds to the following heartbeat. To put it in really simple terms, a larger heart rate variability is actually better, assuming you don't have any underlying medical conditions. Stress, smoking, and bad sleep quality, for instance, lower your heart rate variability. And if you're more physically fit, you tend to have a higher heart rate variability. Let's see how accurate the Aura Ring 3 is at measuring heart rate and heart rate variability. Here we can see the heart rate variability for one night, measured with the Aura Ring 3 in red and with the Polar H10 in blue. As you can see, there's generally a pretty good agreement between the Aura Ring 3 and the ECG chest strap, though not quite as good as we saw for heart rate. And we see the same thing if we look at the results for the other Aura Ring 3 I wore on my other hand. There's a pretty good agreement between both devices, but the Aura Ring does show some deviation. If we now plot an overview similar to before, but now with the heart rate variability according to the chest strap on the horizontal axis and the heart rate variability of the Aura Ring on the vertical axis, we see a pretty good match between the Aura Ring and the chest strap. However, especially when my heart rate variability is a bit higher, we do see more deviation between the Aura Ring 3 and the ECG chest strap, though it's still not bad at all. 
So during sleep, the measurements of heart rate and heart rate variability are pretty good. This means that the algorithm that calculates the sleep score and readiness score can use data that is pretty reliable. However, measuring heart rate is much more difficult when you're awake compared to when you're sleeping. At the moment, the Aura Ring 3 will only take measurements if you're not moving too much. Luckily, there are two types of exercises I've been doing over the last months that are stationary enough for the Aura Ring 3 to have taken some measurements. Let's take a look. But before moving to the results, if this video is proving interesting to you, a sub to the channel and a like or a comment on this video would be amazing. Now to the results. We'll first take a look at the heart rate measurements during indoor cycling. Here you can see a similar plot to before with on the horizontal axis my heart rate according to the ECG chest strap and the measurements according to the aura ring on the vertical axis. The blue line again indicates where the measurements should be if there's perfect agreement and the red line indicates where the measurements are if the aura ring 3 detected half the actual heart rate. The reason I added this red line is because quite often devices detect half of my actual heart rate when they make a mistake. As you can see, when my heart rate was low, the aura ring was pretty good at detecting my heart rate. However, when my heart rate is high, it tends to detect roughly half of my actual heart rate, at least here during spinning. This is indicated by the large group of points right here near the red line. Next, if we look at cycling outside, we see there are much fewer measurements. This is because Aura filtered out many more measurements because of the increased movement associated with cycling outside. However, we do see that the measurements that did pass the filtering were pretty okay, though they did tend to be a bit on the low side, at least when my heart rate was higher, as most points here are underneath the blue line. However, I should again mention that most points were filtered out by Aura because of the movement associated with cycling outside. Now the Aura Ring 3 measures your heart rate all throughout the day if you're not moving too much. So how accurate are those measurements? That is displayed here for one day with the Polar H10 ECG chest strap in blue and the Aura Ring 3 in red. As you can see, the overall patterns between the two agree pretty okay, though there are some deviations as you can see in these moments for instance. And we can see that even more clearly in this second example day right here, with mostly a good agreement, but definitely some moments where the aura ring picks up some spikes in my heart rate. Another way of checking the daytime heart rate is by comparing the measurements of the two aura ring threes I wore at the same time. That is displayed here with one aura ring three along the horizontal axis and another aura ring three on the vertical axis. Each dot is a matching measurement between the two and as you can see overall there's a pretty good agreement. However there's still definitely some deviation with quite some measurements quite far away from the blue line as you can see especially here but also here. This indicates that there are some moments where the aura rings do not agree on the detected heart rate. Overall, the current heart rate algorithm only works really well on the lower heart rate ranges and during the day only seems to be useful for tracking my general patterns in heart rate. As we saw when cycling or on my stationary bike, it detects a much too low heart rate, even when moving very little. I hope that the heart rate accuracy will be much better with the new heart rate algorithm that Aura promises to release in June. I do find it a bit disappointing that it will be initially limited to running, cycling and walking, which means that many exercises cannot be tracked yet when a new algorithm is released. With the current version of the software that Aura provides, I would say that for most people the heart rate and heart rate variability measurements during the night are the ones that are the most informative and the measurements during the day are not that useful and also much less accurate. Next, let's take a look at sleep stage tracking. The Aura Ring 2 already had a large focus on sleep tracking, but the actual sleep stage tracking was mediocre and it struggled especially with tracking your REM sleep. I'll check the sleep stage tracking of the Aura Ring 3 in two ways. First, I'll check if two Aura Ring 3s worn at the same time give the same sleep tracking result. And second, I'll compare the sleep detection of the Aura Ring 3 against an EEG headband that can actually measure my brain waves. If the two rings do not give the same result, that means that either the raw measurements themselves or the algorithm underneath is not very stable. Now the fact that I wore one ring on the left and one on the right hand could introduce some differences in the movement data both rings record during sleep. However, again, this is something that the algorithm should be able to deal with. If not, this means it's inherently unreliable at estimating your sleep stages. 
Let's take a look at the percentage of each of the sleep stages the rings predicted over a total of 25 nights. On the left is the aura ring 3 I wore on my left hand and on the right is the one I wore on my right hand. I'll refer to them as the left aura ring and the right aura ring for convenience. But both are aura ring 3s running the same firmware. As you can see the total percentages of each of the sleep stages are roughly the same which is a good thing. However, this only tells a small part of the story. More informative is checking if they predict the same sleep stages at the same time. That result is displayed here. Now here I took the right aura ring 3 as a reference which is plotted on top here and I checked what sleep stage the left aura ring 3 predicted when the right ring said I was in deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep or awake. Which means each column should sum to 100%. Now I know this might be a bit confusing, but I'll give an example. Take this first column here for instance. This shows that out of all of the deep sleep the right aura ring 3 predicted, 77% was also predicted as deep sleep by the left aura ring. However, a little over 20% was predicted differently, in this case mostly as light sleep. Light sleep detection agrees even less well, with less than 70% of what was light sleep according to the right aura ring also predicted as light sleep by the other aura ring. If it was predicted differently, this was mostly as deep sleep and REM sleep. Now REM sleep had the worst agreement between the two aura ring 3s. Only a little over 50% of what was REM sleep according to one aura ring was also predicted as REM sleep by the other ring. When the two rings did disagree on REM sleep, it was often with light sleep. Awake detection also showed only mediocre agreement at best at less than 70%. And as we often see, if they do disagree, this is mostly with one ring predicting me as being awake, whilst the other predicts me as being in light sleep. This makes some sense as light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake. So what does all of this mean? What well, indicates the current sleep tracking algorithm used by the Aura Ring 3 is not very stable and could give different sleep tracking results depending on which hand you wear it on. Now while I was sleeping it could of course be that the movement of my right hand was different from the movement of my left hand. However, I don't think that's a valid excuse because in reality I did go through certain sleep stages and if a device like the Aura Ring claims to be able to approximate this, it should give the same result no matter what hand I wear it on. At least that's my take on things. We can do some more testing to confirm this. As a secondary test, I also wore this EEG headband that can actually measure my brain waves and was specifically created to track my sleep stages. Here I display a similar plot to before, but now using the Dream 2 EEG headband as a reference. I show the results for my right Aura Ring 3, for which I had 81 nights of data. For getting an overall impression of how well the watches perform, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, it's not perfect and the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I'd also like to try in the Aura Ring 3 in the future. First of all, deep sleep detection agreed pretty well with the EEG headband, with an average agreement of about 90%. Light sleep detection agreed less well at just over 50% and REM sleep agreement is even a bit worse at just under 50%. Awake detection does tend to show somewhat better agreement at about 70%. And again, it's mostly confused with light sleep but also with deep sleep sometimes. Overall, the trends are similar in the two tests I did. In both cases, the deep sleep and the wake detection showed the best agreement and the REM sleep agreement is the worst. To me, this indicates the current sleep tracking algorithm of Aura is still mediocre. And we can put that in further perspective by comparing the Aura Ring 3 against many of the other watches and sleep trackers I've tested over the last two years. Specifically, we can compare the Aura Ring 3's agreement with the EEG device with the agreement of many other watches. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages for each device with the EEG device. And on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. The better the agreement with the EEG device the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see the best agreeing devices include different Fitbits, whoop straps and the withing sleep analyzer. If we now plot the results for the two Aura Ring 3s in here, we can see that they're not terrible at an average agreement of about 65% over the four sleep stages. This percentage is largely relatively high due to the deep sleep and awake detection. However, they're still definitely not amongst the best sleep trackers out there. If we now plot the results for the two Aura Ring 2s I tested in the last year in the same graph, we see that they had roughly the same overall agreement with the EEG headband at about 65%. However, they had an even lower REM sleep agreement than the Aura Ring 3s, which is why they're lower on the vertical axis. 
Now I retested one of my Aura Ring 2s over the last months and if we add that to this plot we can see it again has a similar performance and is very close to the old results for the Aura Ring 2s and the new results for the Aura Ring 3s. So the results between these five tests of different Aura Rings of different generations seems to be very similar. So I would not say that the Aura Ring 3 is significantly better than the Aura Ring 2 when it comes to sleep tracking, at least not yet. These results confirm for me that the sleep stage tracking of the Aura Ring is still mediocre. Aura promises to launch a new sleep stage tracking algorithm this autumn and as I discussed in a previous video it's looking very promising, though I need to test it to believe it. However the fact that currently the Aura Ring 3 cannot track your sleep stages reliably yet does mean that the sleep stage tracking is not that useful. One thing it is pretty good at is detecting the moment I fell asleep and the moment I woke up. Here I show the differences in when the EEG device and the Aura Ring 3 detected me waking up and falling asleep. The different nights are on the vertical axis and the time difference is on the horizontal axis, with the time differences in blue for falling asleep and in yellow for waking up. If the points are to the left of the zero line, it means that the Aura Ring 3 detected me as falling asleep or waking up too early. If they're to the right, it was too late. We want those differences to be as close to zero as possible, and we can indeed see that most points are really close to zero. There are three occasions where the Aura Ring 3 detected me as falling asleep much, much too early, as you can see based on these three blue dots. However, overall, it's mostly pretty good at detecting the moment I fell asleep and the moment I woke up which also means it can likely get a pretty good estimate of the time I spent sleeping. Overall, the Aura Ring 3 is good at some things and not at some other things. However, I still think it can be used to track and potentially improve your overall health. Let's first summarize what we know. The Aura Ring 3 can measure your heart rate and heart rate variability pretty accurately when you're sleeping. The heart rate measurements during the day are good enough to track your overall patterns, but we need to wait until June for the new algorithm to see if it can actually track your heart rate during exercise, because the current firmware is definitely not good enough. The sleep stage tracking is also not great at the moment, so again we have to wait, in this case until autumn when Aura promises to release the new algorithm. However, I think the strength of the Aura Ring and the software it uses is translating all the measurements it does into summarized insights that are easy for people to understand. As I showed in another video, the Aura Ring provides a readiness score that correlates with other real world measurements I perform on myself like my blood pressure and provides actionable advice on your day, for instance how active you should be. It for example also uses your heart rate patterns to try and explain why your sleep might have been suboptimal. And for me it was able to detect when I had a meal right before bed and how this caused certain heart rate patterns. I therefore believe that people can use these kind of metrics to try and optimize their activities and their sleep. This way the Aura Ring is basically a helping hand in deciding your sleep and workout schedules, in combination of course with how you subjectively feel. That way you can figure out what for you is the latest for instance you can have a big meal, what is the best moment for you to exercise and it will serve as a reminder to get enough sleep and keep a consistent sleep schedule. That being said, I think there are two big caveats. First of all, I still think that the current version of the Aura Ring 3 is not significantly better than the Aura Ring 2 for this purpose. If the new promised algorithms turn out to be suboptimal, it's not really worth the extra $6 per month for me. Personally, I feel they should have waited charging people 6 bucks per month until those features were available. Currently, I would be perfectly happy with just an Aura Ring 2 instead of the Aura Ring 3, since I don't think there's a major improvement yet. Second, I think the measurements of the Aura Ring are mostly very convenient as a way of tracking your health, but if you're already very happy with your sleep and workout routine and you're able to be consistent, it might not add that much value. The main thing it could still help you with in that case is as a way of detecting fever before it becomes apparent you're sick. As I've shown in a past video, the Aura Ring 2 was quite good at detecting some of my viral infections, and this could even have improved on the new Aura Ring 3 since it has additional sensors. Overall, I think that the Aura Ring 3 can be a very helpful tool, however not much has changed yet compared to the Aura Ring 2, and we'll have to see if Aura lives up to its promises. I personally dislike charging a subscription fee on top of the full price for a device, but in future tests I'll find out if it's worth it, so consider subscribing if you want to see those tests. Also, if you want to see early test results, check out the Shorts channel I just started. If you want to know more about the algorithms behind the Aura Ring, check out these videos right here. 
Also, if you want the best heart rate tracking, check out these videos on the Apple Watch. Now, I hope this video informed you on the health tracking capabilities of the Aura Ring 3. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.